Okay, so yes, we've got someone else who has um, sent in their three questions to OSM Vision, ask us anything. Remember, you can put it on osmvision.wetransfer.com. That is your three questions that you film, yeah? All right, let's get straight to the questions. Hi, so the question I have is, um, yeah, I know about the Anunnaki's and some sort of history of how humanity was created. Um, but if if we were created by the Anunnaki's, then we should be grateful to them. Although there is a part where um, it's also talked about the, uh, where, where they've sort of limited our DNA. They've put some things in place in our DNA to limit our powers and our consciousness and um, third eye and stuff like that. So my question is, first of all, were we already on planet Earth and then the Anunnaki came and modified our DNAs or were we just basically apes and monkeys and the Anunnaki's came and modified that and gave us intelligence and consciousness and and, um, and now we are here. That's my first question. My second question is... Okay, yeah, just before we go into the second question, um, so the first question, he says, I know about the Anunnaki and that they created us. Um, and then he says, if. So that kind of shows doubt. He said, if they did, da 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 da. And um, one of the misconceptions, and we always say, is to know the words and break down the words because when you say Anunnaki, it's really a description or a breakdown of an incident that took place when beings came to this planet that was known as Ki at the time. Right, the planet, one of the names of the planet was Ki. So when you say Anunnaki, the word Na in that Sumerian cuneiform language that is recorded in means 50. And obviously Anu is referring to who they translate in the Bible as the Most High and in the Greek as Anu, A-N-O. So when you break down the entire word, it's literally saying beings that Anu sent to this planet Ki in groups of 50. That doesn't describe or tell, tell you who the beings were. But these were actually different species of, of beings. Um, and his two sons, Enlil and Enki, and their families. So one of the misconceptions, as my um, the person that's just sent the question was saying, is that everyone assumes that the Anunnaki were first and that everything comes from them and they created us and we. When people say we, like, they put everybody together. So the first thing is to realise that the word Anunnaki is just a description of beings coming here. Then you have to say which beings were they, who were the beings, and these were those, um, the, the, the family of Anu, like Enlo and Enki. And before the Anunnaki came here, you already had our African ancestors as the Pa Natharu. The Natharu, right, which people call Natir or Natiru in ancient Egypt, they predate the Anunnaki coming here. They were the, actually the Pa Natharu were the ones to come here first, millions of years before other beings came here. So when you're talking about the Nibiru story, you're talking about the crash of Nibiru, which is like, 24 billion years ago and the planet has been here from its inception goes back trillions of years ago right where our ancestors um, go back to like seven to six trillion years as we evolved here as etheric beings or you know in, in air pockets as gaseous being and then um, evoluted on the planet so I'm saying that the Anunnaki only carried out a specific creation at the time because when they came here they were looking for gold 
and the atmosphere of the planet was too dense for them. They weren't able to work in these conditions. So they went about creating a being to do the work called a Lulu Amilu. And the, the, what they did was take the evolving beings already on the planet from the Natharu as the Patarites, all right? And these Patarites are known pre-dynastic and people refer to them as pygmies. And so what they did is they took their genetics, which came from our ancestors as the, the original Natharu, mixed in their DNA with that and then created, and it wasn't just like one instance, they created different beings, hybrid beings, until they perfected the primitive worker because they had to teach this being how to use tools, how to, you know, basically use their, you know, the intelligence and things like that. So this is where you get lots of deformities that came about by way of these gravitations to, to produce a being that could do the work. So that it's not related to all of humanity because you have the Natharu, whose descendants are the Africans, the original Africans, or as we say, the Patarites, and then you had the Anunnaki coming in and creating these hybrids. And then after that, you had other beings that also came, yeah? Um, in fact, even before, the, um, even before the Anunnaki, you had the Hindu beings as well that were also grafting beings. And um, then you had other beings like the Pleiades or the Pleiadians from the Pleiades constellation that came. You had beings from Andromeda. You had different beings that used to come onto the planet to just vacate, to, you know, like hunt, um, you know, just to carry out recreation. And so, yes, it's not everybody came from the Anunnaki, and yet they were maimed because they were only supposed to be slaves, yeah, um, uh, and be a primitive worker. So they only gave them certain abilities so that they can just do the work and what then happened is that there were rules that you weren't supposed to have sex with these beings. But then you had other beings that came along, right? Um, reptilians, etc., and other beings that came here. This is where Genesis picks up saying that these Nephilims or beings came down here and raped these beings and had offspring. And this is where the chaos started because then you had different beings coming onto the planet and producing offspring when they weren't supposed to. They were actually violating the intergalactical laws. All right, so um, that's what happened. So don't mix that story up of the Anunnaki with the Parnatharu. So let me just rewind the question um, just so that I make sure that I have actually um, answered all of it. Hi, so the question I have is... Um, yeah, I know about the Anunnaki's and... So there he goes, he said, yeah, I know about the Anunnaki's, but where do you know about the Anunnaki's from? Where's the source? Who's teaching you? And what information have they given you about the Anunnaki? Well, let's carry on. Some sort of history of how humanity was created. Then he says, some sort of history of how humanity was created. Again, that's, again, wish it was a little bit. So we need, with Wu Sabah, we like to know... What are you referring to? Where did you get this information from? All right. Um, but if if we were created by the Anunnaki's, then... So he says, if we were created by the Anunnaki's. You see, some people genetics go back to the Anunnaki's because once they left their offspring and their bloodline on the planet, other beings also were, like, mating with that offspring and then producing... So some people on the planet are related or tied into the Anunnaki, but not everyone is from the line of the Anunnaki. We should be grateful to them. So when you say we should be grateful to them, well, some people look at the Anunnaki as the gods and they think they come from them and they're grateful to them. But when you start to research and know about the different species of Anunnaki, they are not all good or agreeable. This is why the whole good and bad and agreeable and disagreeable thing comes in. Although there is a part where um, 
it's also talked about the, uh, where, where they've sort of limited our DNA. So that limiting of the DNA is the maiming of those beings that they created because they only wanted them to be slaves and to be workers, all right? They've put some things in place in our DNA to limit our powers and our consciousness and um, third eye and stuff like that. So my question is, first of all, were we already on planet Earth? So then he says, were we already on the planet Earth? So that ex explains what I was saying, that the African species, by way of the Parnatharu, and other aquatic beings were already on the planet. But when you say planet Earth, there were beings in the waters as well, not just on the planet. But our ancestors as the Patarites were already on the planet, yes. But that's what I'm saying, that that's a different um, origin to the, the Anunnaki. And then the Anunnaki came and modified our DNAs, or were we just basically apes? and monkeys and that bit of where well, we just apes and monkeys now the anthropologists have explained and broken down the different races on the planet coming from different origins such as the you know the homo nerdy the homo habilis the um, the denisovan the homo florensis which is the asian the obviously the first one habilis and the um homo habilis um, that's dealing with the African, then you have, when he's talking about the, the Neanderthal, the Basque, and the, um, what we call Cro-Magnum, that's dealing with the Caucasian, and this is why they tie into those, those what he's calling apes and monkeys, all right? And the Anunnaki's came and modified that and gave us intelligence and consciousness, and, and, um, and now we are here. That's my first question. Yeah, so the we, I always say you have to be clear when you're saying we, because everybody tries to put everybody together in one, and it doesn't go that way. My second question is, now that the Anunnakis are not more here, and there's a lot of chaos and evil and wickedness going on in the earth, um, I still feel like there are some entities that are controlling the earth and manipulating our governments and societies. So he says, he feels that they're no longer here, but as I've already explained, they are here because the beings and people on the planet are part of the offspring. And both what you're calling agreeable and disagreeable, where he's saying good and bad entities, and you have people that are still in contact with some of these disagreeable entities, and they are the ones that are ruling the planet, and they, they obviously get help and um, assistance from these extraterrestrials. But the planet is mixed up with different people from different origins and some are still in contact with different extraterrestrials, all right? So my question is, are there entities that are against this evil? Are there good entities that are interested in the growth and advancement of humanity? And I, even though I think they are, I think those entities are there. I think there are entities that are interested in the growth of humanity and they are working towards um, helping humanity because they cannot do anything without our, our will. We have to be the ones to want them, to want to change, to want to be free from the matrix. And they are just there to help. So those are my two questions. Okay, so again, he's asking if these entities are still here Yes, there are many, many different entities, agreeable and disagreeable, many different extraterrestrials, which we cover in our online, online course and our book, um, and many of the books by the Master Teacher Parnabad Yanun that go into these different species of extraterrestrials that we've mentioned many times. And so, yes, you have agreeable extraterrestrials that they, this is their home. In fact, some of them have been here before humanoid life forms and they look at this as their planet and their home. So they have an interest in preserving it. Um, you know, so when there is threat of destruction to the planet, a lot of these other beings will um, you know, come together to work together to protect the planet because it's also their home. Um, so yes, there are positive 
agreeable and there are negative, disagreeable beings. Some want to take over and control everybody and everything on the planet and others fight against it. So um, when you're saying, yeah, uh, they're definitely different um, entities on the planet. And um, I'm trying to remember the last part of that. Let me just um, rewind it. Hi, so the these are there. I think there are entities that are interested in the growth of humanity and they are working towards um, helping humanity because... Yeah, that was it really. He was saying he thinks there are entities on the planet. This is where Wu Sabat comes in as well because Wu Sabat is about waking, waking people up from the, the sleep that they're in. It's a hypnotic spell called the spell of Kingu or Leviathan. And the word Kingu actually relates to the word king because the kingdom that um, the Satanists are running now and the king over that kingdom is the person that is ushering in the disagreeable and the negative. And so, you know, we have to, those positive and agreeable entities and along with the other extraterrestrials that want the best for humanity and want to wake us up and raise our consciousness such as our master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, he's giving you the information so that you can start to activate and use your mind and your, your brain again, so that you can start to use nine mind, nine reasoning and um, start to think properly and then act properly. And our love and unity that spreads throughout the planet will bring about harmony and peace on the planet. So you're right, there are different forces working you have six ether forces that have been ruling the planet for the last 6,000 years, causing all the chaos, um, Isfat and Tashash, you know, they're causing chaos on the planet. Um, and then you have the nine ether forces that have now come back around into this new sun cycle that are working to eradicate and um, get rid of these six ether forces that have used many tools to keep people trapped and as you said, not using their, their mind or their higher senses. And Wu Sabat is here to reactivate you and to, to wake you up so you can start to research, find out the facts about things instead of just believing. And um, as I said, religion is one of the tools that's been used to dumb people down because they accept um, and believe in books that are not even original and then they don't know the origins of the stories. They accept that there, there's somewhere or some place they're going to go to and that these entities and these gods, um, you know, all these names that you, you're reading in the books but don't know the meanings or where they come from, that you're going to go to this place and you're going to be saved. And so there's a lot of ignorance. Um, the word ignorance literally means to ignore the facts. Yeah, whether you accept it or not, you're just ignoring it. And... Um, if you're just ignoring the facts, it doesn't mean the fact will not remain the fact. So Wu Sabat is here to, as we do, answer your questions, send your question in, uh, your questions in, we answer them, and then you do the research, you find out, and you will find out that it's nothing but truth and facts, and um, then you make your decision and take the actions of, do you want to be on the side of the nine ether forces, or do you want to stay and remain in the six ether forces that have been controlling the, the planet and the beings on it by way of deception of these extraterrestrial beings that actually want to control you and control the planet and just have you as a slave, um, just, you know, just going along with things without knowing. Um, and the reality about that is that a lot of people in religion, especially, let's say, the monotheistic religions and Christianity um, specifically, or all of them, they say that they will tell you a story, a very basic story, that somebody came to remove sin from the, from the world. And so if that did happen and that's the case, why are they still waiting for somebody to come back again? And if you are waiting for someone to come back again, that means they didn't complete the job in the first place or they weren't successful. And when they do, if they do come, how will you know if you don't question, test, research and check things out? 
So you're just going to go ahead, go along blindly, waiting for someone to come along. And you don't know where they're going to come, at what time, how they're going to come, what they're going to look like. And so you're just ignoring the facts and just waiting blindly. And it's like people have died waiting. You know, it's like the blind leading the blind. And Wu Sabat is here and we're saying this is the solution, this is the answer. You have one that has been sent here to basically wake us up and it's down to you to at least check it out. That's why we say, don't believe us, check it out. Or if you're in doubt, come and ask us anything. All right, check it out on OSM Vision. Check us out on OSM Vision, ask us anything. Send your three questions in by filming yourself. Um, you can, if you're in the UK and you're local, you can come along and have a one-to-one. -one. We have the lives every Tuesday on YouTube. You can phone in from anywhere in the world and ask us your question. But for this type of answers via your questions, submit your video filming yourself to osmvision.wechansfer.com um, and we'll, you know, we'll answer your questions. All right. Wadu.